Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Anton with Comic-Con.com. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. I'm with some of my favorite people in the industry, uh, and we are going to be talking more about uh, one of the standout books of the year, uh, Kill Your Darlings. Yeah, I would like to introduce you to the, the boys. Um, I know they're there. There they are. It's us. Hi, We're guys. We snuck uh, so, uh, <laughs> and, Lisa and Bob are with me again. Um, we, there will be Hello. links to the, uh, the show notes for the last time we sat on and talked. Uh, mm -hmm. The book, I don't believe, was even out yet last time we got together. No. Um, no. Now it is out. It's going strong. Uh, you Five know, whole issues. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, now that we have time to circle back and, and I can bring it up to more than just Bob, I did say that the mm -hmm. first issue would uh, get multiple printings. Uh, you I, called it. You called it. You yeah. this guy. Uh, I am the uh -huh. tastemaker. Uh, and <laughs> Maybe you, you're manifesting something. Maybe you should say the rest of the series is going to sell out within a week every every, every month. For the, yeah, for just the put that energy out there for just, us. Yeah, maybe everyone. you should just say yeah, that. That would be yeah. great. So I, you should I, say I, issue eight is going to four printings. Uh, I, 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 I would be surprised. We're going to pick up the trade, you know? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think Del Toro would do a really good job of it. To be Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no, you you are correct. He's on yeah. the short list for sure. I I feel like he could he could really knock it out of the park. Um, and and mm -hmm. speaking of the trade, I mean, we can jump in there. Mm -hmm. So so the series is coming to to a finality, right? Um, and, and yeah, so far, today went right? live. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is going to be a trade. Yes, uh, and will I will be. That for people who have not picked up the floppies, um, you should have uh, listened should. to me. They're great Agreed. <laughs> They're great. Listen, we we wanted to make with the with each single issue, we wanted to make each one of them like a cool artifact to to have in and of itself. So even if you are a trade reader, I think they're cool items to have. They, in your they all individually have their own nice thick covers that are wraparounds by Bob Quinn and everything. So it's like, yeah, you're not just picking up segmented parts of a trade. Like they are awesome, mm -hmm. like little luxury pieces of art on their own. Uh, but Agreed. if you're, if you, if you can only get the trade, you'll get the full story. You'll, you'll yeah. still be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of the our, our, our beautiful designer, John J Hill really knows a thing or two about paper stock. It's very and true. Knew, knew the ones to pick to make sure that when you pick up a copy of Kill Your Darlings, it doesn't feel like a comic book. It feels like just a just regular ass book. It's really good. <laughs> it's <Art>. nice. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. art piece. It's the Lexus mm -hmm. of comic books. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you going to buy a Honda? No, you're buying an Acura, baby. That's what we got. <laughs> I, I, I drive a Honda. Uh, uh, I drove I like a Honda until I, I like sold it. it. You know what I got for it? A hundred dollars. A hundred bucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're driving a fucking '82 Civic in 2004. Sell that shit for a hundred bucks. Yeah, baby. <laughs> baby. If you're yes, but yes, the trade paperback it's coming eventually, and it will be the complete epic, which is something that we're very excited about. Something we've wanted to offer people for a very long time. Yeah, uh, it's going to be. They're all built uh, as single issue monthly comic books. We love that reading experience, mm -hmm. and the series was built for that reading experience. However, uh, we do think it's going to read very nicely as one one tome. Uh, yeah. So we're very excited about that. But before that, hop on the single issues tr train. It'd be yeah, it'd gonna, be better. It's gonna go from feeling like you're you're watching episodes of a TV show as they come out to feeling like the movie experience. Except like every twenty minutes in the movie, it's like, oh my god, cliffhanger! Uh, oh, I just I, I get to keep going. This is sweet. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. There's a really nice binging quality that that came mm. with it as I was reading it. Um, mm as the singles were coming out, it divorcing from like, uh, you know, typical cable, right? We're in the streaming service era. So we, you know, you can binge pretty much anything as it drops, but yeah. there's not much that like I will make time for, you know, it's like, I'll catch up, I'll catch up. But this yeah. was a, this was always delight. Like when it dropped um, oh, it in, you know, to, to gush for a moment because I will, because this book is awesome. And anyone <laughs> nice. who really needs to read it. Um, issue four is interesting to me because I have a very short list of comic panels uh, or pages that I feel like 
made a huge impact, right? And they're not they're not they're not big ones, you know. They're not crazy things that like uh, blow you away or whatever. But for everybody, uh, one of them's like in the first issue of Trans Metropolitan. Um, Spider still has his beard and his hair. He's wearing like a green jacket. It's a very small middle of the page panel, and he's walking down the front of a taxi cab, like in the city street, and it's. Mm-hmm. It's a very small picture of him, but that is so iconic to me. It's like it's like yeah. in my mind, it's fused in there. Uh, One of my mm-hmm. favorite, probably my favorite panel in any comic ever is like that image. I love um, it. Brian Hurt did a really awesome uh, in in the first or second issue of The Damned. Um, there's a really awesome piece that Brian Hurt did where the main character uh, who comes back from the dead has his has his throat slit and he's lying sort of in this in this very chiaroscuro kind of looking way. It's a black sure. and white book and it looks really cool and that was iconic mm-hmm. issue four of kill your darlings has a page that bob did an inverse of like the kirby crackle when she has the sword that uh-huh. destroyed me in a way i was not ready for <laughs> um, and i just had it open on my i mean it was just open on my laptop for like weeks uh, <laughs> I, I finally closed it down because i had to get a terabyte uh, to transfer stuff over and i was like oh i gotta close sure. everything but I mean, like yeah. from the point that I got that issue, like I finished reading it and I just scrolled back and it was, it's yeah. one of those things that like transfixed me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it now has the unique niche opportunity of being like, okay, here's memorable things from comics. I love. I love that. Yeah. That yeah. page is one of them. It's so, it's so perfectly done. It's just. I, my jaw dropped when Bob turned that in. Yeah. I mean, cause it's, yeah. it's, it was such an, that like, it's one of those moments that was that like, has been in every version of the book is the moment when when she she pulls the sword out for the first time and yeah actually seeing it was just like oh there it is he did it yeah it's, it's ridiculous it's amazing you, you <laughs> just you, you just fill the series with iconic imagery bob that's Very true. Uh, that's my take and that is oh. one of the yeah biggest ones i'd say absolutely thank you gentlemen luckily you gave me a script that had stuff i could do that with <laughs> <laughs> he deflects uh, hey Let's all kiss each other. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have that to ask the after show. Um, <laughs> yeah, Comic Con uh, nights, baby. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, like Listen, after dark. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and, and I, I think that's one of the things that you, you know, from the from the narrative, uh, the way the story's constructed, the way it comes across, mm. feels very personal. Um, and I feel like I, I'm not the only one, you know, cause just looking at comments, looking, talking to other people, seeing what other people in the bullpen are saying, um, mm-hmm. you know, other people in the industry are talking about, it feels like so many people have taken something away from the series that, that hits on in a shared experience, right? Mm-hmm. It, maybe we don't all have the same childhood trauma, but all of us have, you know, similar experiences and it feels like this is a way to process a lot of that. I mean, that's got to feel kind of good for for you guys, right? That you've been able to produce a piece of art that is collaborative storytelling and has hit so well, it resonated really. Um, what what do you think, rewarding wise? Like, what do you think is the most rewarding part of this series for you guys? Like, what is, how are you feeling in this moment? You know, Griffin. Hmm. Hmm. Um, very gratified uh is is probably the biggest thing that we're feeling uh or or even validated in a way because for so long it was ethan and i alone talking about all this stuff um ethan's got a great point in his letter in issue one that's like hey if you find yourself relating to this um that's you know that's that's cool also sorry to hear that uh and really you know, that's that's what we like most, I think, about doing this is the uh, the shared experience uh, and being able to basically just communicate with everybody, talk about our feelings with everybody and have them sort of explore their own feelings. And if we can get you sort of reflecting on your own life or asking questions about your own experiences uh, and if you find anything beneficial in there great that's that's really really awesome yeah like like it um there's like several different levels on which like putting something out there like this can be like rewarding and like it's really awesome that we got to put this out there at the scale that we did and it's really awesome 
to get paid for making something that you care about and everything like on many levels there's like a lot of gratification but yeah the 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 most important one the heaviest one is is yeah like anybody telling us that they read it and had an important experience with it or an emotional experience with it or that they tapped into it in some way um anytime that somebody at a convention or at a signing uh or in an interview or anything has said like man this really like (laughs) this touched on something uh for me is like I, I there, there that's like crack for me there's no there's no better <laughs> feeling in the world to me than somebody mm-hmm. telling me like that's like i just want to invoke that for the rest of my life because like we truly like want to tell stories and want to uh give people experiences that like leave them with something like it's not just like a you know disposable entertainment that just burns away instantly it's like something that will stick in your head and like and will maybe contribute to your life in, in any small way um and it, this thing has has meant that to me like a lot like i've cried several times in the making of this book and i am gonna look when i have the final issue physically i'm gonna i i think the last page is gonna make me cry my eyes out and the idea that anybody else could be feeling a fraction of that on release day looking at that same image uh yeah it means the world mm-hmm. it's it's um it's a thing that I feel like is lacking in storytelling. Sometimes there's a a lack of authenticity and dialogue, Hmm. Uh, you know, and it, and that's fine. I mean, it comes through from editing. It comes through because, you know, you write and you, it sounds cool in your head, but it maybe isn't how you talk. Uh, Listeners at home, um, there's a moment in issue five uh, where there's a reaction to a very traumatic thing that starts to happen. Mm -hmm and as that plays out feels like one of the most authentic uh Mm. how someone would react in that moment it it is uh very pure and very Mm. raw emotionally and it may i had to stop reading it and i'm like i'm you know i'm I'm watch a horror movie before i go to bed that's (laughs) normal for me right like i Mm -hmm. i enjoy i enjoy that sort of thing um but there is such an earnest mm. emotional impact that the story has. Uh, and that that one threw me uh, mm. in a way I was not expecting. So I am looking forward to the rest of the story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> issue five is a brutal one. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, that's, I really appreciate that. I'm really glad that it landed. Yeah, it sort of um, recontextualizes a lot of the sort of emotional underpinnings that we set up in one, which then sort of, I think, asks you to reevaluate a lot of the first half of the series in the same way that I think it will ask certain characters to reevaluate. Uh, and mm-hmm. so we're, we want you to sort of have a conversation with yourself uh, about the the events that unfold in issue five and how you feel about certain characters in issue five. And uh, if there's dissonance there, that's okay. That's what we want. And that's like a perfect example too, is like five was like one of the scariest moments of the series of putting it out there. Cause it was like, this means something to me. This works to me. Like this like tells me exactly what I need to know. And like makes me feel very specific things. And I, and it was really scary. Just wondering if, if anybody else would feel that. And so, yeah, it's really great to hear that. Yeah, you were, yep. you were into it. I, I read, you know, I read multiple, you know, issues multiple times, especially when I get them. Um, and and it's it's different because typically I'll like skip the credits page because I don't want to know who's working on a book. Uh, yep. well, you know, I've had I've had instances where it's like, oh man, I really dug this, and it's like, oh, I just played D anD D with that guy. Um, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's like with, this is different now that we're further along in the series. It's like I know that you guys are working on it, so there's. Mm-hmm. I'm tr- I try to be as objective as possible. Um, sure. So trying to be as objective as possible. I think this is one of those those books that like I would put on lists as oh, like the you. Um, you know like the quintessential. You want to get in your feels like this is gonna this is this is <laughs> this is the pivot. Uh, and I think you know narratively it's written very well. The dialogue is fantastic. Uh, okay. The dialogue is probably some of the best that I've read in the last five years. It's oh, wow. really really powerful. What I love also is that um, Bob has been doing it throughout the series, and I keep talking about the lighting. There is mm-hmm. a there's sort of a tonal shift in what's <laughs> happening 
with yeah. the lighting and time periods and I'm I'm keeping it vague because I want people to you know be be yeah. kind of surprised but there's some really like next level stuff that from a subconscious sort of perspective if you look at the pages and you're like oh this affects me this way because it was done like this this is really cool like there's some stuff that i could see somebody you know i don't, I don't think people use projectors anymore but like you know you put up on the, the whiteboards you know and you're like i'm gonna yeah. teach a class about color theory like this <laughs> this is kind of what i think people would want to lean on as a person who has the art degrees uh this is kind of where <laughs> I would, like this is a lesson plan come from because mm -hmm. there's really cool stuff that happens in there um speaking speaking as the you know the the the, the arts men of the book uh do you feel like because you were able to do sort of all of the pieces right you were able to, to pencil ink and then do the colors you feel like that gave you more freedom to kind of explore the page as opposed to having to rely on like a colorist like where where's your head at with that um yeah, I, I, I've said this from the beginning, which was, uh, I, there was, I really, really, really wanted to color this book. Like, and, and when I pencil and ink a page, typically I'm thinking about how I would color it, light it, and, and what have you. And the, the beautiful thing about this is that, like, again, I, I haven't had to compromise on anything or had to work through somebody else and go, hey, could we do something like this? And, like, trying to explain it without, like... You know, because you, you don't want to do something where you go in and somebody like has created something and then like they're feeling sort of, you know, uh, uh, creatively attached to it. And then you come in there and you go, no, you did it wrong, stupid. Like nobody, nobody likes that. Right. So um, it's nice. The only person's feelings I'm hurting are mine when I say, no, <laughs> dummy, do it better. Um, but uh, but no, I, I, I don't know that I've explored the page in different ways, but like f finally the comic book public is able to truly see my vision uh, you know what i mean because it's like i'm not you know it, it's not filtered through anybody this is this is a pure okay. expression of how i saw mm -hmm. the thing from from the beginning and the 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 joke i always tell is that like you know the Ethan and Griffin put the stuff in, in the script, and then my job is to as violent, or, or what I try to do at least, <laughs> is, is, is as violently as possible, drag you into the part of of your subconscious that feels that way, so that you know exactly how you're supposed to feel, and you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, sit around here. Oh, mm -hmm. how am I? like no, feel totally. this way about it, totally. and then wiggle you while you're there. <laughs> Bob, Bob's instincts for that have never steered wrong like ever like like he's surprised us with approaches to scenes like we've always talked about the the green the matrix green look of the anderson center in issue two is so sickly and so gross and like we did not like we did not point him in that direction but when we got it we were like oh yeah yeah totally yeah. like this yeah. sucks yeah like, like, it's, like <laughs> yeah, this place is bad yeah, exactly. uh, i don't want to go there <laughs> and then when you get out of it when they finally escape it's such a relief like to see the, the you know the the purpleness of the night outside and everything it's just like so much easier on the eyes and like yeah it's bob knows exactly where to take take your brain visually to make you feel mm -hmm. exactly uh how we're trying to make you feel yeah it's so impressive yeah the, there was there's a lighting the lighting in that moment mm. is the back and forth of that lighting is so who uh mm -hmm. yeah man <laughs> Doing his it's, it's really it's toast. really real <laughs> uh, it's really real uh it will probably be the focus of the entire review um, because, <laughs> Excellent. because it's a moment um yeah. and you know it'll probably be delayed just because i don't want to spoil it for anybody um because mm -hmm. it's worth the read but dang it's a big moment. It's it's been there since the inception of the series. It yeah. is it has been in the underbelly, uh, in, in, embedded in the bedrock um, of everything that we've written. Even if uh, an issue might not sort of directly like point to something or or add a sort of building block to the tower that we have to sort of pull out, you know, at the end of a or during issue five, but. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's been in the subconscious of all of our all of our scripts, and so for it to finally be out uh, and part of the story is pretty satisfying, but also really upsetting because it's a really upsetting yeah, issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
so good though. <laughs> okay, excellent. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. That's yeah. again, we're talking about dissonance. How can we create a, a, a unique sort of jarring experience? And it's like, um, how about it's a really sad issue, but it's also it also like rips. It's super fast paced. <laughs> My, my wife and I, who, my wife, who is the coolest person I know, uh, my wife and I, uh, you know, we, we, we have these discussions a lot because there's a lot of times where she's like, I want to go see this movie. We'll go to a the theater and I have no idea what I'm about to watch. And then it ends mm -hmm. up being like salt burn. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. you know, there, there, there are things. And I'm like, we yeah. you come to the other side of a thing and you're like, well, it wasn't badly made. Mm. But I wouldn't sit here and go like, "That's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy <laughs> it. It was great. It was it was wonderful, but it was not. Fun. Didn't give you warm fuzzy feelings, <laughs> right? And I think yeah. I think that there is oft a um, a pulling of punches. That is a mm. good turn of phrase to use in certain situations where like things are meant to be impactful and meant to an elicit a response or an emotional feeling and yeah. uh as of yet it does not feel like this series has done so um mm -hmm. and now we're, we're kind of hurtling towards a conclusion um and mm -hmm. that feels bittersweet because i want more but at the same time it feels like we're gonna we're gonna get a natural ending of things can you can you talk a little bit about kind of the ending without and not spoiling anything just sort of strap us in what we should expect as we're making our way to that end game point oh, nothing there's, nothing there's, that we say can prepare you <laughs> that is for what to expect yeah. <laughs> there's there's so little we can say i will but i i can say we left we left nothing unsaid but yeah. like there, there are no ideas left on the floor uh everything uh everything that we wanted bob to draw that we thought was cool everything we thought was insane everything we felt was satisfying everything uh like meant something to us it's all there and that's why it's yeah. a billion pages long uh and so uh you you will you will get all of it and well, uh, i i feel perfectly gratified with how it wraps up so i hope everybody else does yeah, and talking about pulling punches we've we've never done so during the whole series there's no. been no reason to it's it's our book. We get to do whatever we want with it. And image is not a place uh, is not, is not a company filled with people that are going to come down on us for making any sort of choices. Uh, uh, and so um, we did it exactly how we want to do it. And that includes the uh, extra sized 56 page finale, yeah. uh, uh, which, which started as a 100 page finale. And then we <laughs> had to distill it down to all yeah. of the absolute coolest shit the yes. most efficient most important parts so we've all, we've that's, always that's tried to, what we can say we've always just tried to make the right choices like is this right and and i i really think that we've done that with the ending like it all feels right and what's our what's our cover price looking like for that issue uh so as 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 wonderful as it would be to just be like it's just still 3.99 because why not we are not in a position where we can actually do that <laughs> right, financially, right. which was a sad reality to confront, but we wanted to still keep it as minimal as, as possible. Um, especially as a sort of thank you to the people who get all the way to issue eight. Yeah. Um, it's five ninety nine. That's uh, an awesome which price. Is, it's it's five ninety nine. So it's a lot it's of not even <laughs> it's not even the price of two issues for what is almost three issues worth and you're, right, and you're, yeah. Yeah. And you're still getting that premium printing and everything it's it's i mean it's pretty good that's a fine that's that's a value that's a fantastic <laughs> value <laughs> it, <laughs> it is it is so and and is, is wait till wait till we get to the fucking trade paperback that's talk uh -huh. about a value holy shit uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be <laughs> I, I mean you guys have brought nothing but the a game every issue thanks the man. art is Thank spectacular you. this story is mm -hmm. phenomenal we will reconvene and have another one of our little uh, talk sessions okay. once the mm -hmm. you know, series concludes. Absolutely. I'm sure we need to do a yep. retrospective. Uh, <laughs> Probably. But, you know, we'll, and we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll be able to talk about the trade. But mm -hmm. that's a hell of a freaking value. Like, if anybody <laughs> takes anything away from this, is like, read issue five, cry with me. And then uh, that, wow. 
Yeah, yeah and then get a, and then get a graphic novel for six bucks. What's your problem? For six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, nope, listen, one of those uh, you know, the, the, going to Ollie's and getting a, a graphic novel. That's it. Listen, <laughs> man, Jeez. comics are for the people. Uh, yeah. We want we want as many folks to be able to uh, enjoy it as possible. Um, which which will also entail you hopping on board, get on board with us because this is like a, we built it so it, you know it's like a roller coaster. We we want as many people riding the ride with us uh, as possible. So issues one through five, they're in stores now. Get get it on your pull list. Join yeah, us. Go uh, ask one in the store. Uh, whatever your L mm-hmm. comic shop is, go grab it. I. 100 percent stint. This book is 10 out of 10. Every issue has been phenomenal. Um, oh, so, I appreciate um, that. I've been are- saying it. I've been <laughs> saying it. That's, that's true. <laughs> Everybody's finally catching uh, up to Bob. Screaming yeah, screaming it from the rooftop since day one. Welcome yeah. to where I was in whenever this came out. I don't even remember <laughs> anymore. My brain is toothpaste. <laughs> have um, we been have, we're coming up on working together for two years on it i think no well, it's, well it's, you're done working on it you've wrapped it yeah issue I'm, eight, I'm, but, I'm done baby but we're still here hanging about, out yeah almost yeah two we years just get, later. now we just get to have fun <laughs> Woo, yeah, but you know what making the book was fun it's been fun the whole true. time it's fun. true <laughs> i'm sorry we had to chain you to your desk for like three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> The real treasure is the trauma we gained along the way. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right, boys. It's always a pleasure. We'll talk. Uh, we'll talk as we wrap the series. Um, look forward to seeing you again. Everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, go put it on your pull list. Buy them comics. Mm. Okay. Everybody, have a good night.